so that's fine now let's quickly see like how we can optimize like some of these steps and i think there was a good question from one of the student uh in today's office hours we, we talked about how we can separate like a 2d gaussian into two different one dimensional gaussians we didn't cover that uh, earlier but let me quickly go through this uh, now so if you look at like the gaussian equation which is shown here on the right top okay so this is like a two-dimensional gaussian equation and if you remember like from your high school maths you can actually break this exponent into two different terms right because this is an addition here so in if it's like exponent you know that addition converts to multiplication so you can actually separate these two x's so you can first have like the x square term and then you can have the y square term so you can you can kind of separate uh, these two and the idea is if you have to apply a 2d gaussian to filter an image usually you have a two-dimensional filter but what you can do is you can actually first just filter in the x direction and then you can filter in the y direction and the result is not going to change okay so if you, if you look at like how much that is saving you in terms of computation cost if you use a two-dimensional gaussian filter then at each location you you will have multiplications like number of multiplications which is equal to number of values you have in your filter for example if your filter is five cross five okay so n is uh, size of the filter then for each location you will have 25 different multiplications okay and of course there are additions so let's ignore addition it's not very computationally expensive so then the complexity is kind of n square so if you look at big o and of course you have to do that uh, for every pixel location but let's not worry about that let's just worry about one operation okay so that's kind of n square but if you break this down into two different uh, gaussians where like you perform filtering independently in x and y direction so the idea is you first perform filtering in x direction and then you perform filtering in y direction so in this case what will happen is if you look at this filter this is this is like one dimensional filter so if the size is n then you only have n multiplications right so this operation here of filtering will be of order order n and once that is done again if you have to filter again this y is a different direction but again this is one dimensional filter of size n that is also going to give you like n uh, multiplications and if you compute the complexity that's just going to be 2n so it's a big difference uh, but if you think carefully if you're using a very small kernel let's say three cross three so this is going to be nine and this is going to be six so it's not huge difference but still some sa uh, some saving in terms of computation uh, steps but if, if n is huge let's say five this is going to be 25 and this is going to be 10. so you see like as the kernel grows big you you are saving a lot all right so we we have already seen uh what like a two-dimensional gaussian kernel looks like if we break it down uh, this is going to be like your gaussian filter in one dimension and again i think we have seen this as well so in this case this is like g1 and this is g2 now that was for a, a two-dimensional gaussian we can do something similar for log operator as well okay so for gaussian i think it was easy to interpret uh, for log it's slightly uh, complicated again we are not going to go through the theorem for this that might like a, another lecture so we don't want to do that now but if you look at like your uh, laplacian operation here of course you can first perform uh, just on the gaussian filter and so that step is fine because it's kind of associative uh, we we know that all right so this converts to this which is good now let's break down this into like independent filtering operations so since this is like second order derivative it's slightly complicated and that this turns out to be something like this okay so we are not going to go through like how we go from this step to, to this step of course if you're interested i can uh, point you to like the uh the, to the exact theorem but of course that's not required for this course okay let's try to just understand what these steps are so in this case what uh, we are getting at is we are computing partial derivative in y direction and then using that for filtering and then we are just computing single order derivative in x direction performing filtering okay so that's first step the second step is again we are computing second order partial derivative in x direction and this is just single step derivative in y direction so these these are like two step filtering operations and we just add these two values 
So this will again require n square multiplications because it's a 2D kernel. But in this case, again, all of these kernels are one dimensional. So it's just four times n. Okay, so it's kind of saving a lot of computation power. So if we look into the steps of uh, the complete edge detection uh, algorithm, you will have your uh, image. You will compute a uh, Gaussian filtering in x direction and Gaussian filtering in y direction. That's going to give you i times g. So that was separability of Gaussian filtering. Now for Laplace, what's going to happen is given an image, first you will compute Gaussian filtering like uh, in y direction, then in x direction. And again, in x direction, y direction. The subscripts over here, these are like uh, the, the order of derivatives. So this is second order derivative. This is also second order. And you just add those values. That's going to give you Laplace in of your uh, of your image. Okay. So let's quickly go over the algorithm. You just compute the uh, the the LOG, the filter uh, the filtering uh, filter filtered image using LOG operator. So you have two options. You can either use the two D filter which I showed you, or you can use like four different one D filters, and you can follow the steps which I showed you in the previous slide. Okay. For this, you will need like these four different values. But of course, like uh, computing these values, it's just one uh, one step process. You don't have to repeat this again. So that doesn't count towards uh, the computational complexity. So that's the first step. And it includes everything like smoothing your image and finding double order derivatives. The second step is how to find zero crossings from the rows and columns and how you find the slope of each zero crossings. Okay, And then you apply the threshold. So these are like the four steps which we require for performing edge detection. Now let's quickly go through uh, the same image we had. Okay, this is something which you get from uh, the Laplacian operation. So the compute Laplacian of Gaussian and then you perform filtering on images and you find zero crossings. It's going to give you something like this. All right, and zero crossing again, as I told you, like you will have to, you will have to set a threshold to be, to, to, to be able to say that whether this is, this is an edge or not. Okay, now this I think we have slightly covered uh, previously uh, as well when you're we talking about filtering. But what is the standard deviation of the Gaussian you are using that affects a lot like in your in, in the in the output of your edge detection? And the it, it the the intuition remains the same. If the standard deviation of a Gaussian is pretty low, which means you will focus more on the center or the current filter, it will give you like a lot of fine-grained edges. And as you keep increasing like the standard deviation of the Gaussian, which means that, uh, so when you're increasing your uh, standard deviation, you are moving, your Gaussian will be like this for sigma equals to one, and then it's going to go like this. So you are widening your Gaussian, right? Which means that initially you were paying more attention at the current uh, pixel value, but as you increase the uh, standard deviation, you're actually paying more attention to the neighboring pixels. And if you do that, then you are kind of getting coarse level edges. You can increase it further, the edges will be coarser. Okay, so that's how the, the standard deviation of a Gaussian affects the kind of edges you will determine in your input image. 